This 165 hertz gaming setup can fit in my backpack. That sounds crazy, but bear with me. As some of you probably already know the answer, but the performance specs may still surprise you. So this is my desktop setup. I have right here 165 hertz monitor, my Keychron Q3, a vertical mouse that I sometimes change out with a G502, and a handful of other things that help complete the setup. But then there's the actual computer itself, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second after a word from today's sponsor, Govi. You might have noticed the awesome lights behind my monitor on the desk. That is part of Govi's new gaming light kit. A camera mounts on top of the monitor, it looks down at the monitor, takes the colors from that, and extends the picture onto the wall behind your game setup. This adds a whole new level of immersion to my gaming experience, and it has a ton of features on top of that. You can set different scenes, it's compatible with Google and Alexa, and you can even make it react to your music or sounds in the room. The kit has two light poles and a light strip that attaches to the back side of your monitor. All that connects up to the camera, and you can even customize it with an app. They can be programmed to 16 million colors, including all the different individual LED light segments. There's animated presets for them, and you can also set them to different tones of daylight. I'm actually using Govi lights right now on this set. So a big thank you to Govi for helping to sponsor the channel. If you wanna check their stuff out, this gaming light kit is really cool. It's at a link available in the video description below. Seriously, check it out, it's sick. Now the computer, don't click away, don't click away. It's a laptop I bolted to the bottom of my desk. Now, I have been a desktop performance enthusiast for years. I've tried a number of the current gen GPUs, 3080s, 3060s, 6800 XT, and I have been doing this for a long time. I mean, the first computer I built was out of Packard Bell parts. I remember building a machine when Crisis first came out, trying to get those extra frames. And then I remember when the 460 Ti came out and everyone was like, wow, this is insane. It can't get better than this. It did get better than that. And I actually switched off of my desktop to this machine for gaming. There's a few reasons why. This laptop costs less than $1,000. It has a 30 series GPU in it that is actually adequately cooled. You know what, let's get into the specifics of it. I'm tired of being vague. This machine has an i5-11260H. It has 16 gigs of RAM and it has an RTX 3050 Ti. Now, I know that's not a 3070, that's not a 3080, but it is plenty enough to get the job done, especially when you're gaming at 1080p. On my desktop, I'm using that with a 1080p 165 hertz monitor, and it does great. Games like Apex Legends, I have absolutely no problems hitting very high frame rates. And other games like Destiny, well, I found that having those extra frames really does matter. For a while, I tried playing on a 60 hertz machine and it was good, but I was not hitting my shots nearly as often. Which is crazy because I grew up playing on like 30 hertz machines or actually often less than that. But being able to go from 60 hertz up to 144 hertz or 165 hertz, And as a desktop setup, that does great. This fits right up under the desk. It keeps itself plenty cool the whole time. And there's battery settings built in so I can keep the battery at exactly 60%, which if you know anything about batteries, you know that would be good for my overall battery's longevity. It's also nice because if the power goes out, my computer does have a built-in battery backup. It's not like things are all just gonna... I have time to slide out my laptop, open it, save my game. Now, this machine itself has a built-in 17.3 inch screen that is 144 hertz at 1080p. It's got a full-size number pad and some pretty big air vents on the bottom. Not only that, the screws are all pretty easy to access because this machine, I got it for $800. And it didn't come with 16 gigs of RAM, it came with eight gigs of RAM. But being a machine that's just thick enough and just easy enough to open, I bought a cheap kit of RAM online, I bought an extra SSD, and I upgraded both. Now this machine has an extra two terabytes of storage just for games, and that extra stick of RAM gets me up to 16 gigs. And with all that together, the computer was still less than $1,000. Okay, hold up. There are some things that this video is missing. 
I'm using this because my 3D printer is running. So like any laptop, this one does get hot under extreme loads, but to actually get it to thermal throttle, I really did have to put it under extreme loads. So let's talk about that. I could get this CPU to 100 degrees Celsius, but to do so, I would have to run IDA64, completely slamming the CPU to 100% and the iGPU to 100% and run Furmark at the same time. So we're maxing the internal discrete GPU, the iGPU and the processor, everything to 100% and then let it saturate. Then once the cooling system is completely thermally saturated with a synthetic workload maxing out everything, it would start to thermal throttle. However, gaming, including games that do max out this computer's capabilities, I did not get it to thermal throttle. I do hit the limit of the single core performance of the i5 in this computer, but I still think it's a pretty good pairing for the 3050 Ti inside of it, and I still got pretty great frames. If I get into something that is really insane, really crazy, I might drop down into 90, but usually it's well over 100. Now, among adding both a RAM and an SSD into this machine, I also added in, gotta read the label here, Gelid GC Extreme. This was at the recommendation of JDM Watt. He has a website I'll put right here. And that actually brought my temps down even farther. Now, see, if I'm playing games, the CPU in this gets to be in the mid 70 degrees, and so does the GPU. And if you ask me, that's not bad for a laptop. But I was able to drop that another seven degrees because I found out, hey, the stock application was not that good. Specifically on the CPU, it was actually only covering about two thirds of the CPU when smushed out. So quick fix, take off the cooler, put on the new thermal compound, put it back on. I cleaned it off with isopropyl alcohol beforehand and the temps got even better. Now, if that was a desktop with a giant beefy cooling solution, yeah, that wouldn't be incredible, but the GPU, now that's not bad. I have had some beefy 30 series GPUs that stay pegged close to 90 degrees. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Other things to talk about the display, it's not incredible, but it's decent. Is it going to wow you with vibrant, incredible colors? No, if anything, I would say that it leans towards the side of muted. However, it's still better than other affordable gaming laptops I've had in the past. I had several things in Dell's G series lineup that really just underwhelmed me. And this is a display that I would consider acceptable in terms of color and brightness performance. I'm not gonna be going and sitting out and playing in broad daylight, but in an airport with really big windows on the side of me, I had no problems playing Elden Ring. And that was still a pretty bright environment, albeit not direct sunlight. And I'm sure you noticed in B-roll also, this thing has a lot of scratches on it. That is because I have really put this machine through its paces testing it out and I've loved it the whole time. You guys already know that I like to go crazy on a lot of my setups. I like to go for wild audio setups and things that probably cost more than my car, but I still use a machine like this for gaming. And the reason for that is because it gets the job done and it does it really, really well. Yes, I could probably build a desktop and throw a 3090 in it and play games at 4K and all of that, but I don't really want to. For me, my priorities are something that's not going to make my room a million degrees in the summer, something that's going to get good frame rates, it's going to have low latency, and on top of all that, something I can take with me when I travel and get the exact same performance, and I do because my traveling machine is the same machine I use when I'm normally playing at my desk. It's nice having a machine that isn't constantly sounding like it's going to lift off and go to space. And it's nice not having the room that I game in be 10,000 degrees. That's an exaggeration. You know what I mean. God, you remember when Devil's Canyon came out, the 4790K? That CPU was a nuclear reactor. I swear to God, I got the single most unlucky bin I could have possibly gotten for that CPU because no matter what I cooled it with, it was always thermal throttling and the whole room just felt like a sauna. And don't get me wrong, this does get warm. If I put it on my lap, I'm gonna have a toasty lap. But it's not dissipating enough heat into the room to make a considerable difference on the ambient temperature. In fact, it's really all things considered not drawing that much power from the wall for a gaming machine. And on top of all those things, with GPU prices currently, honestly, I felt like it was a pretty good deal to get a whole computer with an RTX 30 series GPU you under a thousand dollars and that's part of what swayed me in this direction because I feel like if I can get a hold of this machine other people can get a hold of it too 
And when I decided to switch off my desktop, I thought, wow, the price of a desktop graphics card is the price of an entire laptop that will get comparable performance. That's kind of silly. So here you have it. The desktop and portable gaming machine that fits in my backpack. This thing's been pretty great. Fun fact also, that's the machine that I do all of my headphone testing on. I hook it up to my DAC amp system, and it's nice because a battery-powered machine, you never have to worry about ground noise. So, you know, I would like to start a discussion. I'd like to talk with you guys in the comments. Let me know what you think about this whole thing. Do you need to go for maximum performance? Do I need a 3090, all that? How much do those things matter to you, or is it more just about frame rates in the gaming experience? Because I'm not knocking anybody who wants to play games at 4K. I did that for a while, and it was pretty fun. But I realized over time that doesn't matter to me as much as just getting a good frame rate and having consistent performance both at home and on the go. What matters to you? What do you look for in a gaming setup? And what would you like to see me talk about in the future? Because I think that an overall setup tour is due. By the way, if you want to check out this machine or my peripherals, they will all be linked in the video description with the exception of my audio gear. That is going to get a video by itself. And I think that is going to wrap up today's video. One more time, I want to thank today's channel sponsor, Govi, and their gaming light kit. It genuinely is really cool. I've really enjoyed using it, and it's definitely going to continue to be a part of my setup. If you want to check it out, once again, it is at a link in the video description below. That is going to wrap up today's video. Guys, if you liked it, please leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, help support the channel, you can get in my Telegram chat. It's linked at Patreon in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this. Till the next one. Peace.